Okay, here it is, stripped. And it's not looking so good now, is it? Uh, base plate's just fine. But the body, that terrible casting line straight across the bonnet there. That'll go. And she's got lots of little scuffs and scratches along the roof there. And the boot lid's terrible. Even a bit of a hole there by the look. So yeah, quite crude in the casting. But gonna pretty this body up. And you can see there the Quite a terrible texture. Gives you an idea of just how much the paint hides. Another little pinhole just in the door there as well. So yeah, a bit ordinary, but we'll get it looking pretty flash. Pretty liberal with the putty, but uh, yeah, bear with me. I know it looks. Uh, all over the shop, but now yet yeah, before it dries, scrape it all away from the chrome trim lines, body mould lines, around the windows, that sort of stuff. Makes the sanding a lot easier. You'll see. Still going. So I applied last night what I thought would be the last coat of primer and um, like I've said primer is really good for exposing all the body floors uh, especially those you're just not prepared to live with uh, so I, I missed a small little chip on the rear bar there um, just there so I filled that a little bit of clean up work there and still a lot going on here just because there's obvious casting errors that would just annoy me once I painted it and it's, it's never going to be right um, because I'm not prepared to put in the 
amount of hours that it needs because it is it is what it is. It's um, a 1940s dinky toy. But I'll get it looking a lot better than what it was. Yeah, a lot of work needed on that centre line down the hood and on the edges where that uh, floor and the casting in the mould was. Almost there, I reckon. Well, we've got to put it down and, and just be happy with it at some point, otherwise it just drags on. There she is. So, I'm going for a black, which is not a colour it was released in, I don't think. Um, it was released in a grey, bit of a tan colour as well. And in America, had a uh, the American release had a different colour scheme. It was two-tone, much like this car started out. It was a, oh, like a almost a burgundy body, I think it was. Or it was a red body, sorry. Red body and um, darker burgundy guards, two-tone scheme. But I'm not doing it for this one. I'm going black for this one. So I'm just going to try the gloss varnish mixed in with the black. Um, apparently that's one way of doing it, or you can just do the varnish by itself. I need to thin it down a little bit because this is not for air, it's thicker. And the air paints, as you know, are, are thin, straight into the airbrush, good to go. So it's an experiment, we'll see how we go. Okay, that's the end result. It's not too bad, actually. It's, you know, it looks like the factory finish, they were a bit glossy but not over the top. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a flaw in the other side. I've got a bit of a drop. You might not be able to see it. We'll have to repair. Um, but yeah, so that's how it looks with a bit of clear mixed in with the base color. Okay, the body's finally done and painted and there's uh, Pretty epic getting the paint right because as you know black every floor can be seen in black paint and the body had so much casting errors and scratches and scuffs and marks and you know, you, just so many issues and hours potentially oh god I put hours into it no doubt about it far more than I should have really when you consider it's not a really rare model or anything like that um, uh, but I did it I spent so much time on it because I really love this body style it's great um, so paints all done I've done slightly different to factory with the chrome they only put a chrome strip along the front of the bumper on the leading edge there and obviously the grille and the headlights they don't they didn't put silver along the, the top there um, yeah. and that, that, that portion the broad portion and it's the same with the back they only put a strip of chrome along the back edge so you don't see it from the back not from above but um, I like that look a bit better um, and I did put uh, some silver on the door handles and a small bit of chrome on the hood ornament. So now it's axle time. So the axles, they are a problem in themselves because um, I don't have any. I don't have the original axles, I mean. And I don't have my bench drill here. Uh, I actually don't even have anything like an anvil or a lump of steel to try and round off the axles um, using the drill press method that you see a lot. Um, look on Marty's Matchbox um, restorations. He does it quite a lot and does it quite well with his Matchbox cars. Um, a bit easier with those because the axles are a thinner diameter. Um, not so easy when you're up at Dinky Toy scales um, I've got nothing to press down on it 
So I've come up with a cunning plan that I'll only use for this particular model um, while I sort out my dual press problem. So what I'm going to do, and it's unorthodox because I literally have no alternative, um, is I've got four of these rivets. There's this little lead rivets that and my dad's collection and they're designed to hold base plates on and you've seen me use them in the other videos um, but what I will be doing is they will form the end of the axle in the wheel thus and because they're slightly wider in diameter than the standard end of a uh, dinky toy axle, they actually resemble more closely the hubcap of a late 30s um, American car. And they're very thin and I've put a bit of a curve on them so they resemble a hubcap. And then I will poke the axle in the other end And super glue the whole thing together when it goes into the car itself and throw the base plate back on it's that simple so let's see how we go with that okay there's the first one looks fantastic looks like a proper hubcap on a 1940s late 30s, 40s car. And all I did was uh, dip the axle uh, into a little bit of baking powder and also put a little bit of baking powder down inside the hub of the wheel so that when the super glue and the baking powder mated in the hole, the bond was quick and strong. So looking really good. Just have a look at that wheel. It's just the thing of beauty. There she is, the 1939 Lincoln Zephyr dinky toy. I tell you, the black is just so hard to get right because it shows up every floor and um, I really wish you could see this in the flesh because it's, it's really nice um, white tyres which I don't have many of but it uh, looks really great with white tyres quite a car and standard uh, rivet replacement with factory original looking rivets so it's um, just come out so beautiful and there's the seeing that hubcap I suppose Just screams late 30s, 40s America. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, this was a, a bit of a challenge, this one, but uh, every model you learn a little bit more, and um, so the next ones will be even better still. And that's a lovely car. Now don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notified when the next one's out which won't be far away thanks for watching